tonight, Celia has faded away, but many areas are still worth watching across the Northern Hemisphere. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Trump Weather Bulletin for June 29th. Well, here we are back at it again, and we have Celia, which has finally faded away, as well as the Tetratropical Cyclone 2L, which still has not attained a name despite being forecast to do so yesterday. It's being pushed back a bit longer. It is making its closest approach near Trinidad now, as we enter uh, still 30 storms so far this year. It's day 29 of Atlantic hurricane season. You can see 2L making its closest approach, expected to become a hurricane before making landfall in Nicaragua and crossing over into the eastern Pacific. We also have 95L, which is expected to make landfall in Texas in a few days, but still has a chance to form before then. Another area of interest behind 2L. In the eastern Pacific, it's day 46, and we have the remnants of Celia, of course. On top of that, we also have Invest 94E, which has been uh, continuing to organize throughout the day, up to 70% chance of developing will likely be a short-lived and generally weak storm. In the western Pacific, the main focus remains in Vest 97W, which is a 60% chance of formation Picasso has now designated a stroke of the Prussian Calloy, and it looks like it is shifting westward, where we could be looking at a landfall between Hong Kong and the Hainan Peninsula is the most likely situation. 98W will still not be forming for a few more days. In the West or North Indian Ocean, we have nothing going on in the aftermath of 94A's quick dissipation. Uh, nothing going on in the next five days either, so we're back to what is typically n the normal case for the end of June. Here's a look at how 2L is progressing. A lot of convection at this point, uh, but it's been struggling to get that well-defined center. And once that does happen, it will be designated as next tropical storm. But given the fact that we don't know what's just going to be getting that name first, whether it's 95L or 2L, there's no sense in trying to pre-name this thing yet. And the next name they like is, of course, Bonnie. Here is our satellite imagery. We're starting it off with the Atlantic, and you can see 2L racing through uh, the Windward Islands and about to enter the Caribbean. You can see uh, the wave behind that, and 95L in the Gulf of Mexico there. Uh, it doesn't really look that prominent there in that satellite imagery. In the Eastern Pacific, you can see another look at 94L uh, to the east of Texas, but you can also see uh, 94E. And that's progress as it continues to be developing out south to the south of Mexico. And in the western Pacific, you can see what's going on here. 97W trying to get its act together to the west of the Philippines. And then 98W looking like a hot mess to the east of the Philippines. So, uh, pretty much polar opposites in this side of things. Raven Sea is drying out in the aftermath of 94A. And then the Bay of Bengal is looking a bit lackluster compared to normal in terms of monsoon seas uh, activity. Uh, other than that, not much going on there. Southwestern Indian Ocean is looking pretty quiet. Uh, a lot of cirrus clouds uh, to the east of the Madagascar, but not really much going on uh, that's going to be developing anytime soon here. Australian region, Northern Australia continues to be hit with these clouds that have been uh, hitting them for days now. Other than that, not much going on. There's an extra tropical low uh, that might be passing just to the north of New Zealand in the next hours. Here are the sea surface temperatures for the eastern Pacific, and you can see what's going on here. It's around 28 to 29 across the area of south of Mexico. Cold spot left behind by Blas and Celia, and in the central Pacific it's pretty cold. Gulf of Mexico, it's around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. In the Caribbean, it's 28 to 29. There's a bit of a, a rough patch for uh, 27 degrees Celsius temperatures just to the north of Colombia and Venezuela. Main development region is looking around 28 to uh, just under 29 degrees Celsius as well. In the North Indian Ocean, looking at the Bay of Bengal, that would be 28 to 29 degrees Celsius there. In the Arabian Sea, it's around 28 to 29 as well, with a pocket of 30 degrees Celsius in the northeastern part of the sea. In the Western Pacific, it's around 28 to 29 across much of the basin of the South China Sea, and areas to the northeast of the Philippines continue to see those temperatures near 30 degrees Celsius. And as you head in the Southern Hemisphere, it's around 27 degrees Celsius near the Australian region, and down to 25 to 26 as you head in the Southwestern Indian Ocean. Um, of course, those temperatures in the Western Pacific are looking pretty, pretty warm. In terms of the sea surface temperature anomalies, the Atlantic is still above average in the tropical parts of the re uh, basin. In the Eastern Pacific is below average for the most part. Western Pacific is looking pretty warm, especially to the south of Japan and the South China Sea. And the North Indian Ocean is looking pretty warm, especially in the northwestern part of the Arabian Sea near Oman. 
Here the ocean heat content dies, and the Atlantic, the Caribbean continues to see more of those spots where a high ocean heat content is building up. And then, of course, there's that random death spot continuing to be there in the eastern Gulf of Mexico for some reason. And in the western Pacific, you can see the ocean heat content is pretty high still to the east of the Philippines, and not much at all going on into the eastern Pacific, where it has been low for pretty much this entire season. A lot to cover with the model, so we'll get right into that. We'll start off with the 18Z Tropical Tippets GFS run, and you can see the initialized potential tropical cyclone 2 with that 1007 middle bar low there. And you can see what the forecast for that holds. It looks like it's going to be staying, uh, passing through some of the northern uh, South American islands there, uh, including the northern part of Venezuela. After that, it looks like we see some intensification in the Caribbean before making landfall in Nicaragua as a Category 1. Uh, GFS takes it into uh, further uh, inland areas, which causes it to dissipate. However, that is not really the solution that models are agreeing upon at this time. The most common scenario is the fact that we could be looking at an Atlantic East Pack crossover. Uh, I'll, my, I might share that just before we get into the longer range side of things, but in the meantime, let me get into the Eastern Pacific, and you can see what's going on there. Uh, so this is what we're initializing with. You can see the remnant low circulation of Celia. Uh, now that Celia is dead, there is nothing left, but we also have 94E now. And you can see what ends up with that. Uh, not much of anything really. Uh, looks like the GFS, which was keen on being aggressive with it, has now just flat out not formed it at all. Instead, they're having a different circulation entirely, being a TD4 system. I'm not even sure if that's actually a TC or not, but... Uh, Worth noting that that is a development from the GFS, not developing 94E now. In the Western Pacific, you can see the progress of uh, 97W, which is the 995 millibar low pressure. And for some reason, GFS is initializing with five separate lows from China all the way up into uh, north of the Aleutian Islands there in Alaska. And you can see what ends up becoming of the uh, invest. You have another invest that eventually becomes something. And after taking its time for days, it looks like the GFS is now keen on a landfall just east of the Hainan Peninsula, uh, while the other system looks to be extra tropical by that point already, by the time it's yeah, to the west of Japan and South Korea. So, uh, it's been a bit of a question. While there are models supporting it, it's a question of whether it's actually going to be tropical or not with 98W. And with 97W, it's still a matter of confining the location since it's going to be a slow mover, and the fact that models have backed up a bit off on that one. That's why we still have a 60% chance, which is a bit higher than last night's CWB, uh, but at the same time, there are still some questions that we have to answer before we go a bit higher. Uh, going into the Atlantic again and showing what the most likely scenario is, I will take a look at the other models uh, when it comes to um, potential tropical cyclone 2L. This is the Canadian model, and you can see what goes on with that, and you can see the progress of the wave also kind of trying to get itself together. How the Canadian model takes it way too far south, but shows that crossover happening as well and then if that wasn't enough uh, you can see what icon does with it just to get a multi-perspective here uh, you can see what ends up with that you have the heading the northern south america coast eventually uh, getting itself together also a weaker run not really having much to say on that front so i'm not sure why the 18c models uh, have trended weaker when the the center is formed a little bit more north than expected uh, but it's going to be something to watch. Of course, uh, H triple uh, or uh, H warp, um, those have been pretty good. Uh, now that it's got recon into it, you can see what ends up with that. Uh, it looks like they now take it into um, Nicaragua as a uh, hurricane. It looks like as of right now they're going with an 80 mile an hour hurricane uh, with the pressure 979 millibar. So always going to get a multi perspective things. But as of right now, we are looking at a category one. That there's nothing uh, to say otherwise. Only thing in the longer range actually happens to be the two systems that we've been tracking in the Western Pacific. Uh, once we see the landfall of 97W, it looks like it could stall, bringing some heavy rainfall to wherever it does make landfall. So I think rainfall is going to be the biggest threat of the system now, uh, while that look needs to pass to the west of South Korea. Eventually, it looks like we go back to a little bit of a quiet pattern for a little bit. Uh, and then around hour uh, 240, there is still not much going on. So it looks like once we have this initial wave of explosions of tropical cyclones trying to form, uh, we will go back to a more quiet phase 
and then we should be good for the second half of next week uh, with not much going on, thankfully. Uh, but in the meantime, we've got a lot going on right now. Here's your shameless plug. If you feel the need to support our logo wrap places, even though no one's going to understand who we are, then you can go to our 413 store, buy some merch, even buy a pillow because you feel the need to sleep on us for some reason. That doesn't exactly sound right. For the silly ranges, we're still looking at only one basin because only one basin has uh, development in the GFS side of things after hour 240, and you guessed it, it's the Western Pacific yet again. Uh, in this episode of GFS 1 and Way Too Strong Typhoons, out of nowhere, uh, you can see what ends up with this little pressure system that's in uh, to the east of the Mariana Islands, decides to get itself together, and eventually decides to casually become a typhoon, hit the Mariana Islands itself, and then become a 939 millibar typhoon at hour 384. Again, probably not going to happen. We know the tradition that GFS just likes to flat out put some random super strong typhoon at the end of the run, just because they feel like they can. Don't see that happening. I mean, it's also the Mariana Islands that they're trying to hit as a Cat 4, so, I mean, not exactly too confident on this one. And that's why we call it a Silly Ranges. We'll be back for another episode of Silly Ranges tomorrow, and we'll see what GFS does to some place sometime. On this day, we're looking back to June 29th, 2004, where we had two Typhoons active, Typhoon Mindul, which was coming off of its peak of 145 miles an hour, and we also had Typhoon Ting Ting, which would eventually be peaking as a high in Category 1. Uh, you can see what Mindul looked like at its peak down there in the bottom right, but Mindul would eventually be known as a typhoon that struck the Philippines, Taiwan, and China, causing extensive damage to the latter two countries. Of course, you can find more of our On This Day products powered by Secline History by going to the bottom bar below. The rest of the basins were pretty quiet, Atlantic wouldn't start for another month, and the Eastern Pacific was entirely dead in that June. So, with that being said, the next name in the Atlantic, whenever 2L does get its name, will be Pon uh, Bonnie, followed by Colin. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Darby and Estelle. And in the Central Pacific, while Nickel Black may be telling you to look at this photograph, we're telling you that you cannot look at Hone. In the Western Pacific, the next two names here are Chaba, followed by Irie. In the North Indian Ocean, the next two names here are Citrang, followed by Mandis. And it looks like I will finally be getting to say something else soon, as the Western Pacific continues to try to produce those two invests. In the Southern Hemisphere, in the Australian region, we're looking out for Darien and Ali. In the southwestern Indian Ocean, this is the second to last day that we're saying that Lama is the next name. The list changes July 1st. And for the South Pacific, the next name on the list is Holly. We'll be back for another TWB tomorrow night.